All right, so I want to talk to you about a one and one half barbell squat. This is a great way if you don't have access to quite enough weight for uh, a set to be able to leverage time under tension. So keeping the bar under tension and moving through two different rep ranges uh, for a longer period of time than you would on a normal repetition. And that really creates tension on the quads, the hamstrings and the glutes. It creates a burn. You can do fewer reps and you're able to use less weight to kind of get the same effect. So I want to go over the form of a squat first and then I'll demonstrate how to rack, unrack and re-rack the barbell. I have all this on my squat video, but I want to go over it again here and then we'll get into the one and one half squat. Okay. Doesn't matter whether you're using your body weight or dumbbells or you're holding dumbbells up here, holding cables up here, you got a barbell on your back. The squat is the same no matter what. Feet or shoulder width apart. This is the standard squat. There's wider squats like sumo squats and there's narrower stance squats. But the basic squat is feet, shoulder width apart. So your heels are in line with your shoulders. Toes are turned out about 10 to 15 degrees. Core is tight. Back is straight, so you kind of pull your chest apart by bringing your shoulder blades together just a little bit, so it looks like this, kind of pull them apart. And when I say your core is tight, it's like you imagine that someone's gonna punch you in the stomach and you're tightening them and making them hard so you're protecting yourself. That's what you wanna do. Your head stays straight up and down through the whole range of motion, okay? You don't let your head come back so you can look forward. You actually look down at the ground when you squat, okay? When you move, you want to stay on your heels, everything should stay tight. You breathe in as you go down, out as you come up. But notice that my knees and my hips are moving at the same time. So they're bending at the same time and they're straightening at the same time. My butt is going backwards and my butt is coming forwards. Okay, so all these things are happening. I don't need to be afraid of bending over, I have to bend over so that my center of gravity stays right over my feet so that I don't topple forward or topple, topple backwards, okay? So I breathe in, out, in, out. If there's no pain in my knees or my hips, I try and come down so that my thighs are actually parallel with the ground while I'm staying on my heels, okay? And here's the proper posture right here. Nice straight back, nice tight core, my head's straight. I'm looking kind of down at the ground right there, okay? And then up I come. So that's a regular squat. Uh, with body weight, regular count. Now, how do I rack and unrack, or unrack and rack, this bar? That's important. Safety first when you're using a barbell, okay? You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention to the people around you. You need to pay attention to yourself. You don't wanna fall down on the ground with one of these things on your back. I've seen it happen in a powerlifting competition. It's ugly. So, first things first, your grip just outside of your shoulders. So the inside of your hand is on the outside of your shoulder and you want to rotate your elbows forward so that your shoulder blades separate, okay? What I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to step under the bar and my feet are going to be beside each other as I do that. I'm going to step under and I'm going to make sure that I put the bar down on my shoulders so that it's underneath that big bump at the bottom of my neck. That's my C7 vertebrae, okay? So I'm in position now. I'm on my heels and the bar initially was set between the middle of my chest and my chin so that I get to bend down enough that I can breathe in, out, and I can stand up and unrack it, okay? So it has to be low enough so that I can do that. I do not want to be getting on my tiptoes to try and unrack a heavy squat bar. I'm going to step back a couple steps and then begin my squats, okay? When I'm done, I'm going to walk forward and I'm gonna look both ways to make sure that I'm on the rack. I'm gonna put it down on the left, put it down on the right, and I'm gonna look and make sure that it's there solidly before I slowly climb out. That's how you rack and unrack. Now, let me show you the movement, the one and one half squat. Here it is. Here's what I do. Everything I just told you, except I come down only halfway. And then I drive up and I come down all the way. Okay, so this is the one half portion, and this is the one portion. That's one rep. Two reps. Just let your breathing go naturally. Try and be able to breathe out on the upward movement. 
Okay. This is three reps. Half a rep. Four reps. Half a rep. Five reps. Half a rep. Six reps. Okay. Then I'm going to walk forward, like I said before, make sure that it's in on the left and on the right. I could go right and left first, doesn't matter. And I'm going to step out. So you see, what I'm doing is I'm prolonging the length of the repetition. And I'm doing two different ranges of motion, okay? Halfway down, which is kind of the beginning of the strong range of motion, so it's easier for me to get up from here, and then I'm going all the way down, now I'm in my weak range. Okay, but I'm staying under tension longer. The repetition is longer to do. I'm not going to get as many, and you see I'm winded just from doing six sets at a relatively light weight for me. So, this is a great way to increase tension, increase time under tension, and be able to work out when you don't have quite enough weight to do regular repetitions, okay? So it's a barbell, one and one half squat.